Hello and welcome back to this series of advanced mapping tutorials for Earth Truck Simulator 2. Today we are not really going to map anything, but rather look at the tools that we can use to debug the map or to analyze its performance. I will give you some guidelines to keep in mind so that your players won't experience too much performance issues. After all, we do want to give our players the most bug-free and stutter-free experience as possible. Okay, we have opened up the editor again. And this time I would like to show you some tools that you can use to debug your map or to analyze any problems with it. Um, the first thing I would like to show you is the so-called meaning console. Um, to activate it, you just open the console and you have to type in G mini con 1 to activate it. Obviously 0 will deactivate it and what you can now can see is that there are now some in some uh, numbers uh, appearing at the top of, uh, of your screen and some some of the last messages in the console. Okay, first thing is that uh, the console itself is already a really helpful tool to see what the game is actually doing and if there are any problems. For instance here you can see that it registered water items for the reflection and you see these yellow lines are warnings often they can be ignored but sometimes they already indicate that there is a little problem with your map and red, red uh, lines are errors though this one the ma maximal water level count exceeded usually only results in that the reflection breaks a bit but you shouldn't be too worried about crashes now this is a bit more worrying, here we can see that there are quite some empty items we still need to get rid of. And but uh, often when you are having this mini console uh, on online, you will immediately see when an error appears. And th that can be quite useful. Now um, let me explain something about the numbers here. Uh, here you have uh, a well. Here you have value called FPS. This is the frame per second, obviously, uh, and this is uh, how many frames it can, it renders every second. And around 60 FPS is uh, is uh, quite common, and that's when you have really good performance. Though, if you have a bad PC, you probably see this at 30 or 40 or something, and that's not really. Uh, and that's not, and that's not really smooth uh, gameplay. So you really want to keep this on 60 if you, if you can. Um, next to it is an MS. I think this is the refresh rate in milliseconds, and uh, which is also qu quite low. Um, next to it you have TC. That's a triangle count, and a triangle count is the number of triangles this uh, it has to draw on this on the screen. Uh, so. The more objects are, the more objects are, the more complex objects are. The higher the triangle count, and if you get this over two million, yeah, you can you can experience problems on low edge systems. So we try to keep this below two million, so we don't have too much uh, performance problems on the low edge PCs. Um, the, there we, we have something called SC, but I don't really know what that is, and I used to often ignore that. Now next to it is the draw, the draw count, uh, the draw calls, and the number of draw calls is the every how many instructions the game has to give to the GPU to draw an object, and this is and this seems to have a higher impact on high values than the triangle count. Um, it's now about 1360 and that's pretty low. Uh, it's getting high if it's over 3000 and over 4000 you really experience problems. So keep this below 4000. And here you have to right next to it the number of draw calls per second. And usually this is much higher than the number of draw calls in total. Uh, next it is the virtual memory in megabytes. And after that is and next to that is uh, the number of instant model instance models and number of instance models uh, is actually not re really something you need to keep low. But actually, if you have instant models, you uh, the f things like trees or something or in the also in uh, what uh, street lights, 
instance model that does use the same sh shaders and therefore result in less draw calls and therefore are more efficient in rendering. So if you if you can convert an object to an instance model, instant model then it's it's a uh, it's something you really want to do. Next is the texture memory in uh, megabytes. Um, after that there are a few numbers that I don't really know what they do. But okay, this is what the uh, mini console does. It g gives you quite some uh, analysis already on the top of your, of your screen, and it can tell you if your map will perform good or bad. If so, most people will probably try to uh, keep the FPS count to 60, but the FPS is quite unreliable and really depends on your system. So we rather we want to use values that are uh, more objective and system independent, and that's why we try to focus on the triangle count and the draw calls, since those are system independent. Right. Um, now you have this this, this mini console, but you can uh, get more detailed information. And mini console two to four give you more information. So if you set G mini to two, you have here a triangle count statistics. So you can also see which type of objects uh, generate the most triangles. And therefore if you ha see that this triangle count is getting really high, you can try to find the root cause of the, this high uh, value. And in this case the so called building objects have the highest triangle count and they, they show that they, they uh, contribute the most to the triangle count on this, on this, uh, in this scene. But on the other hand, uh, the road textures give the most, most shadow triangles. So th they uh, contribute the most for the to the shadow to the shadow uh, rendering. Now let's uh, look what, what Minicon 3 has to say and that's the draw call uh, count statistics and there you can see the same but then for the draw calls. You see the segments from um, normal items and the instance items and some standalone items. And Minicon 4, it g gives the number of elements uh, in, uh, in the scene. Alright, and now it's back to 1. There is one more thing I would like to show, show you today, and that is uh, a way to, de to detect invisible walls. Now, in 1.20 in uh, patch 1.24 you have a nice toggle on in the, the main menu but in 1.20c this is not really there so we instead we uh, use the mini console to use the console command to activate the uh, collision boxes so g call box 1 and now you can see all the collision models they are being displayed so everything where your truck can bump into, and this is a way to detect invisible walls. Uh, one of the main causes for invisible walls is when you have uh, so-called uh, boundaries not uh, disa disabled. So most of uh, our prefabs and roads have uh, this thing enabled called no boundary. But if you disable it, you will see that you have a some uh, some polygons that look like this, and so here is w one of those notorious invisible walls, and here you have another one, and this is something we really like to prevent to from occurring. But with this uh, option, you can make them visible, and most of the time we get like ninety percent of this ninety or ninety five percent of these invisibles away with this method. Now we may forget to check some errors on the map or sometimes other objects cause some invisible walls too. But the majority of the really obvious one can be detected by this uh, method. One more final thing, uh, you also see errors on, this ra on the, the road and on the prefabs. And these are in addition of uh, 1.23 is that you now can see in which direction the road goes. So in this case you can really easily spot when you have a 
UK prefab used or not, or when uh, when the uh, roads are not properly connected, or when the prefabs are just just passed the wrong way. You just uh, now can just follow the arrows and you can uh, see how uh, the traffic flows, which is a really nice and really helpful addition from SES. So, so we have we will probably get in the future a lot less bugs regarding accidental use of UK prefabs. So that's it for today. It's maybe a bit of a short episode, but uh, it may be quite helpful to get your map more bug free. And there is one more announcement that I would like to make. Uh, I've tried this week to make every day a tutorial for every uh, work day of the week, but uh, from next week the frequency will be much lower of this for these tutorials. But still, I have most of the things I really would like to tell you. I've got, got them, them out of the way and. I've s the methods I have described so far are methods I usually don't really see that often with my uppers, so therefore I'll, I was really willing to share this with you. So uh, stay tuned for the for the next episode whenever that comes. Bye.